It's been five years since Kelly Lane was sent to prison for murdering her baby Tegan. But the case still intrigues Australia, mostly because Tegan's body has never been found. Kelly's parents, Robert and Sandra, say that alone is cause to reopen the investigation. Another reason could be the witness you're about to meet, whose vital evidence the jury never heard. I find that the offence was premeditated, but only for a short time. It was committed in a situation of desperation, arising from a sense of entrapment and isolation. In her mind, Kelly had nowhere to turn. The years have wearied Sandra and Robert Lane. Thrust into the spotlight, they've watched as their only daughter was jailed for murdering a child they believe is still alive. It's nice to sit down and relax, isn't oh, it? I reckon. You put a lot of it out of your mind because you're thinking about it all the time. Mm. So, so, you know, unless you walked in our shoes, you don't know what it's like. I know it's been a long time, but it's very recent to if me. If I was 25 or 30, it's been... the bullets would bounce off, but as you get older, mm. they don't bounce off as much. You know? mm. Oh. Mm. That's the other thing. Did this, where did this policeman interview you? Down at Manly. At Manly Police Station? Yeah. Forensic criminologist Dr oh, yeah. Xanthi Mallet has been looking into Kelly's murder conviction for the past two years. This might be Kelly. Hang on a second. I'm not saying that Kelly is innocent. I'm not saying she is guilty. All I'm saying is, if she is going to be in prison, let there be evidence for that or let her out. But she left hospital with a two-day-old baby and that baby has never been seen since. Isn't it a fair assumption that that child is dead? We can't say that Tegan is dead because there's no body, so how can you be prosecuted for murder? There's no eyewitness. There's nothing to tie Kelly to committing any crime bar the fact that we don't know where Tegan is. After five years in prison, Kelly is almost unrecognisable. We catch a glimpse of the lean brunette training in the exercise yard. And the woman jailed as a callous child killer is desperate to get home to care for her teenage daughter. To receive a phone call from an inmate at Darwinia Correctional Centre. Hey Kelly, is that you? Oh, hello. Hey, how are you doing? Hi. You sound really, like, teary today. You've got to talk to your daughter. You know, we often talk about, you know, Mum, do you think you'll come home? you think it'll be soon? And, yeah, it breaks my heart. It, it breaks my heart. And I worry how she's feeling and what she's thinking about. And, you know, <laughs> oh. sorry. Do you think she was judged on the secret pregnancies, the adoptions, Absolutely. the lies? Yeah. I think she was judged. It was what I would call trial by media. Um, I think she was painted as a certain type of person, irresponsible. She made poor decisions. She'd lied to people. But if she didn't kill Tegan, why tell so many lies? I would say that just because you're a liar doesn't make you a murderess. Dr Mallet is one of several experts trying to have Kelly's case reviewed. Kelly has never wavered from her story that Tegan, who'd be turning 20 this year, is with her natural father, the mysterious Andrew. Andrew Norris Morris exists because she told me about him at that time. Natalie McCauley's explosive testimony backs up Kelly's story. Natalie works in child protection for the United Nations, but grew up with Kelly on Sydney's northern beaches. Are you sure about the name, Andrew Norris? Absolutely. Absolutely. Same name as my brother. <laughs> How many times would his name have come up? Oh, a number of times. Over a, maybe a three-month period. It was the summer leading into... Um, the new year of, of 96. Um, How do you know so that? Because it was the time when all our 21sts were on. That was nine months before Tegan was born? Yes. That's not a coincidence. That's not um, fanciful. She was telling her mate she was having a fling with someone at the exact time that Tegan would have been conceived. 
Natalie's evidence that Andrew Norris exists and may have Tegan was never heard by the jury. She's critical of the police investigation. They were at my house for five and a half hours and they came up with a summary of a page and a half. And it was very uh, skewed towards what their view was. And that was what? That Tegan had been killed. And had been killed because of Kelly's aspirations to be an Olympian, which is just absurd. To this day, Natalie feels guilty for not noticing her friend's pregnancies and helping her. I think of us back then and I, I wish that I could give that Kelly, the 21-year-old Kelly, a big cuddle to say, you know, you've got a lot of people here and we can help you. But we didn't know. It's still emotional for you now, isn't it, talking about it? Yeah. You I feel like I let her down. In what way? Because she needed a friend. And if she had a friend that she could talk to, um, she wouldn't be where she is now. Mm. Natalie McCauley's evidence is a crucial part of the investigation by lawyer Michelle Reuters, who leads the Innocence Initiative at RMIT. The legal watchdog only takes on rare cases where they believe the conviction can be overturned. One of the things I found really probably most extraordinary about Kelly Lane's case is that people find it easier to believe that a young mother would kill her child than they would believing that a father would accept responsibility for that child and disappear. We don't know if that's where we're going to end up, but that's mm. certainly a real possibility on the facts. Mm. So realistically, what are Kelly's chances of having her guilty verdict overturned? Realistically, the possibilities of having some sort of review, uh, I think would have to be good. Kelly Lane didn't give evidence at her trial in 2010, and it's something she now regrets. So if you went back to a retrial, would you speak now? Would you talk? Would you tell? Yeah? Yeah. I love her and I would stand by her no matter what. Mm. But I wouldn't be sitting here saying that I think her story is truthful if I didn't think it was truthful. Mm. Kelly is fighting to get home to her child. In the meantime, Robert and Sandra are helping to raise their granddaughter, desperate to see Kelly free before it's too late for them. It would be wonderful, whether it's next week or, or in years to come, that's what we're waiting for. Yeah. I'd like to think that uh, some people had a, a poor view about my daughter might change their view or, or might give it some more thought and we hope that by doing this it'll support any action being taken at the moment to um, have, the, have the, the matter looked at again.